Previously on Haven, Call of the King. It looks like they're unloading Haven is having them. dreams about birds seen. and bells. Oh no! I need to stop those trucks so he those goes dogs. to this cave and he Get finds his best friend is getting uh, hassled by guards and then she gets kidnapped by guards. Oh no! So then he falls unconscious because the cave collapses for no apparent reason. So then he goes to seek out his friends and in doing so he destroys the entire mining operation of his poor village that's just trying to make an easy dollar. And then some other stuff happens, and he ends up destroying an entire village's economy. And, you know, their lifestyles, and, you know, probably killing some families in the process. And then there's also, uh, that time that, uh, he blew up the, uh, giant death prison of the bad guys. Which wasn't so cool, because, I mean, a lot of those people are pro- they probably have friends and family, like, the guards in there, like, Old Jenkins and Hankins von Dusseldorf. Now they'll probably never see their families again. And I mean, who's to say they're actually evil? I mean, they might just be doing. They might not agree with the higher ups. They might not agree with what Vetch is doing. But who knows? I mean. Anyway, then we met a random caricature of a Scottish man who uh, gave us this car, but he wasn't happy about giving us this car, so. He sent us into some Death Valley, and now we're in the Death Valley. <laughs> yeah, so th that's that's my recap of what's been going on. Um, it's hard to piece together exactly everything, because the story, although it's fairly straightforward, also is fairly making no sense. Also because I wanted to take up some time because I spend the first couple of minutes of this level trying to figure out what the hell to do. But as you can see, what you're supposed to pick up are those little blue light things that are moving around the ground. And somehow picking them up makes it split into like a bunch of little blue light things that then swirl around your car. And then you're supposed to crash into these giant tractor truck things to blow them up because they have cogs hidden on the inside. If you're ever in need of a cog, then you know what to do. Just, you know, crash your car into another car and you know, pick up the cog with it. Remember guys, it's only vehicular manslaughter if you get caught, so... Just go right ahead. I fully endorse this. I fully endorse this. Anyway, this this level is really a bitch to control. I mean, they've got these little spiky things coming out of the ground that kind of look like the things you're supposed to be picking up to kill the trucky trucks. So, it's confusing because you might get hurt when you're supposed to be not getting hurt. And then when you're trying to drive to kill the big yellow bus things, then, uh, I mean, they're, they're these littler cars, they're driving around all over the place, and if you crash into one of them, well then, you lose all your blue swirly things, and you don't want to lose all your little blue swirly things, and it also doesn't help that your turning radius is complete oh, shit. Yeah. Which is why it took me about 30 seconds to get that cog, when in any normal game it should take not even a second. You should just be able to go, whoop, and there it is. Whoop, there it is. Whoop, there it is. But yeah, um, something this game has that I have not yet commented on is the dynamic lighting. I don't know if that's exactly what it's called, but I'm going to call it that for the sake of fun. Um, Pretty much, it has its own internal clock, and as the time of day in the game changes, then uh, it will change from day to night. And uh, uh, as you will probably notice by the length of this level, it changes from day to night fairly frequently. And by frequently. Pretty much what I'm trying to say is that this level is long, so... Ah! 
I didn't have fun when I was playing it, and I'm not having fun now. But hey, do you think that car has a radio? I mean... I mean, does this planet even have radio? What kind of things do you think they would have on this planet? Because, I mean... Their, their main weapons are apparently yo-yos. Well, there are some guns, I guess. What do you think would be playing on his radio? I mean, I like to imagine that it would be playing classic, you know, like, driving songs, like, On the road again! I can't wait to get on the road again! Well, I'm with my I can't wait to get on the road again! That song is on Donkey Konga, I believe. That's irrelevant, but I think it is. Donkey Konga's an underrated game. Or maybe it's not, I don't know. I haven't played it in a long time. But I mean, it's fun. I mean, you're playing drum, bongos, bongo drum, drum drum. What was I saying? Oh yeah, you're playing the bongos! And you're a monkey. And, uh... I remember there was one ridiculous uh, part of that game where, like, you could play the song, but it wouldn't show you any of the, n any of the notes. That's... Fucking ridiculous. How do they expect you to do that? Pisses me off! How do they expect you to know all of the notes in a song? I mean, here you are sitting down trying to be like, hey, I'm going to be Donkey Kong playing popular music on some bongo drums. But no! Because all the notes are invisible. But the part of the game where the notes aren't invisible is pretty fun. I remember one time when I was a little, little kid. I, uh, d kitten? Did I just say kitten? I was a little kid. Maybe I was a little kitten. I don't know. We don't have very good memories from when we're little babies, so... Maybe I was a kitten, and then I turned into a human somewhere along the line. That would be pretty freaking weird. Anyway, when I was a little kid, I was playing Donkey Kongo with, uh my friend, not my friend, my brother, but my brother had brought his friends, or rather, my friends brought themselves because he invited them. So, we had this Donkey Konga tournament, and it got so legit, because I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> oh, good God. Oh, no, the sneeze, don't, don't go away. Don't, oh, that's gonna... Oh, that it's gone. The sneeze has escaped me. Anyway, I was playing this Donkey Konga tournament with my brother and his friends that he had invited over, and it got super legit because I was a little kid and I was really competitive. And I made it to the final round of the tournament. It was me and this huge black guy. And... I don't remember what song we were playing. I think it might have been all the small things. And I mean, I had practiced that song. That was my most played song. I was so legit on all the small things. And we were playing, we were playing, we were playing. We got about halfway through the song. We were neck and neck, we were neck and neck. I started to pull ahead, I started to pull ahead. And I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking win it. I'm gonna fucking win it. And then we get to the last part of the song where it's like, you just have to pound as fast as physically possible on both of the drums. And, um, I, I was going, I was going, I was going, but my little kid hands were so small and they couldn't move fast enough. And then he just pulled ahead of me in the score. Just pulled ahead of me. And I lost. And then, I threw the biggest temper tantrum of my whole damn life. It started off with... Denial. It was like the stages of grief, essentially. It started off with denial, because I didn't want to accept that I had lost, so I, I challenged him to another round. I was like, hey, uh, let's let's go another round. 
and see who is the superior this time. I wasn't up to snuff last time, but this time, I'm gonna fuck your ass. I didn't say that because I was probably seven at the time. But, that was what I was thinking in my head. Was that I was gonna fuck his shit up. And, and then, then they were like, no, no, you can't. And then somebody was, was like, grab my brother and he's like does he not understand that he lost and then I think and then I cried and I ran up to my room and I cried myself to sleep I was a weird fucking kid anyway now that I've spent this entire episode talking about Donkey Konga and not Haven Call of the King I am discovering that this episode is almost over which is exciting because I was afraid I wasn't going to have a lot to talk about this time, but look at me, talking about Donkey Konga. <laughs> okay, well I'll see you later guys, bye.